Hello everybody, welcome back to lesson five where we're going to carry on finding equivalent fractions and we're going to explore the relationships between the equivalent fractions that we find using the accurate mathematical language we used yesterday. So I set you these tasks, let's have a look at those individually. So this first one here, you started with four eighths and did you find that that was equivalent to two fourths, which is equivalent to a half? And I asked you to use the stem sentences to find the scale factor. So you should have said that the numerator is scaled up by a factor of two and that a half is the same proportion of the shape as two quarters and four eighths. Well, what about this one? So four sixteenths is equivalent to two eighths, which is equivalent to a quarter or a fourth. And one quarter is the same proportion of the whole shape as four sixteenths and two eighths. Has the scale factor changed this time? The scale factor is now four, isn't it? So the numerator in each of those fractions has been scaled by the same factor of four. Well done. And then we were matching equivalent fractions here. So if we start with that top one, so a fifth, the scale factor is five. So if we know the scale factor is five, we're looking for another fraction to match it with, with the same scale factor. And we can see, can't we, that that will be four twentieths. So a fifth and four twentieths are equivalent because four times five is 20. Um, let's look at a quarter. So the scale factor is four. And which other fraction has a scale factor of four? It is indeed three twelfths, well done. So you should have matched a quarter and three twelfths. And finally, if we look at a third, we can see that that would have matched with three ninths. So three ninths takes up the same proportion of the shape as a third and the numerator has been scaled up by a factor of three. It's been multiplied by three. So that's been a really good recap on our language there and thinking about those stem sentences we met. And we're going to need those again for this session. Let's have a quick look at our challenge. Did you ask some of the adults in your house how much pizza they'd like and try and catch them out? I was thinking that a good one might be if you said somebody, would you like a half of a pizza or would you like 50 or hundreds? Because it sounds like you're getting loads if you're having 50 slices. Well, actually, we both know, don't we, that they're smaller slices. Um, so I hope you managed to catch some of your adults out. And then looking at the four children in the playground, two apes of them were wearing a hat. How many of them are wearing a hat? Now, I found it was easier if I found an equivalent fraction to help you think about this, because I knew I had four children. And I had four children and actually two apes didn't help me to solve it very well. But if I found the equivalent fraction of a quarter, then I could really quickly see that those four children out of the four children, one of those children was wearing a hat. So I hope you managed to see that too. I'm going to revisit some of the language that we used yesterday, looking at the vertical relationship between the numerator and the denominator. And yesterday we saw that we could scale up the numerator by the same scale factor, and that would show us that our fractions were equivalent. I'd like you to just take a look at the numerators in both those fractions. And can you see a relationship between them? And have a look at the denominators as well. Can you see a relationship between those? Now, I know yesterday we spoke, didn't we, about additive relationships and that maybe we can look at those numerators and say, well, if I add three to one, I get four. And if I add 15 to five, I get 20. But we said that we weren't looking at additive relationships when we were thinking about comparing the equivalent fractions. And we needed to look at multiplicative relationships. Can you find a relationship between the way the numerator and the denominator have been scaled up. Give me a moment to look at those. I would see that they've both been scaled up by a factor of four. So one multiplied by four is four, and five multiplied by four is 20. So we can see that actually, the relationship we were looking at yesterday, vertically, we've got the same thing happening horizontally, and it's that scaling up and scaling down of the numerators and the denominators. Have a look at this one. You might want to pause me and write this one down and then have a see. Is the scale factor the same vertically for both of these equivalent fractions? And then is it the same horizontally? Can you see a relationship horizontally? Now have pause me and have a look at that. Okay, if you come back, what have you found? Did you find that the scale factor was three 
So the numerator have been scaled up by a factor of three. Yep, so that's what we looked at yesterday, isn't it? And we can see that that, that helps us understand that they're equivalent fractions. What about that horizontal relationship? Did you see a relationship between the numerators and the denominators? Yes, did you see that they're both multiplied by six? So they're scaled up by a factor of six. So we can use this language again, can't we? The numerator has been scaled up or down by a specific factor. The denominator has been scaled up or down by a specific factor. And then we can say the fractions are or are not equivalent. So have another look at those two examples. You might want to pause me again and really, really try and identify those multiplicative relationships again, both horizontally and vertically this time. And you might want to draw those arrows on and just really check that they're the same and tell me if those fractions are or are not equivalent. Just pause me there. Okay, you come back. So did you use the stem sentences to help you? So for the first example, the numerators have been scaled up by a factor of four and the denominators have been scaled up by a factor of four horizontally. But then vertically, the numerator has been scaled up by a factor of five. One times five is five and four times five is 20. Did you find that in the second example as well? Fantastic. I've got this same example here with Ben now, showing the vertical and the horizontal multiplicative relationships. And I've got this generalisation that says a fraction preserves its value only when both the numerator and denominator are scaled by the same factor. So we really need to think about what that language means. What does it mean to preserve something? So it means to keep it the same, doesn't it? So a fraction keeps the equivalent value only when both the numerator and denominator are scaled by the same factor. And yesterday, we had a look at that vertical relationship, didn't we? And so we could see that the numerator was scaled up by a factor of five. But now we're looking at that horizontal relationship and we can see that that's been scaled the same for the numerators and the denominators by four. Um, can you draw anything to help you understand that? Could you maybe draw a bar? to help you visualise that. Pause me now and see if you can draw a bar that helps you show those equivalent fractions. Did you get something like this? So on the bottom bar, the whole has been divided into five equal parts and I can see one of those parts. And the top bar, the whole has been divided into 20 equal parts and four of those parts is the same proportion of the whole. And we can see that those multiplicative relationships are the same. So horizontally, they've both been scaled by a factor of four, and vertically, they've both been scaled by a factor of five. So it proves that in order to find an equivalent fraction in a more abstract manner, then as long as we preserve the scale factor, we will preserve the value of that equivalent fraction. Now, I think it might be helpful here for us to think about if two fractions aren't equal. And what does that do to the scale factor? So I want you to have a look at this one and you're going to have to pause me again for this one, I think. I want you to think about the scale factors. So you're going to have to write this one out and then draw the arrows from the numerator to the denominator to see what the vertical relationship is. And then draw the arrows horizontally between the numerators and between the denominators and see if all of those scale factors are the same. So you should have the same scale factors going vertically and the same scale factors going horizontally. So let you have a little go at that and then we'll maybe have a look at that pictorially as well. So pause me now and have a go at that. Okay, how did you get on? It's interesting, isn't it, when we look at this one? Because when we look at the scale factor vertically, 1 multiplied by 5 is 5. Now, is 5 multiplied by 5? Is that 20? So we can see, can't we, that the vertical scale factor isn't, isn't correct. They're not the same. Were the horizontal scale factors accurate? So 1 multiplied by 5 is 5. 5 multiplied by 5. So no, they weren't, they weren't the same either, were they? 
And we can see the image shows that, doesn't it? Because the bar has been split into five equal parts. But actually, if we do the same sized hole into 20 equal parts, then five of those parts is greater than one fifth. So it proves to us that if we want to preserve the value of the equivalent fraction, the scale factors have to be the same. Have a look at this. Again, you might want to pause me now. I'd like you to find the vertical scale factor and the horizontal scale factor between the numerators and the denominator. Use the stem sentences and tell me if these are equivalent and why. OK, have you come back? Did you find they were equivalent? Yes. So they have the same scale factor of seven vertically. So the numerator can be scaled up by seven and the denominator can be scaled down by seven. And then horizontally, what did you find? They were both scaled by a factor of three. So the numerators have been multiplied by three and the denominators have been multiplied by three. So we had equivalent fractions there. And that generalization we used before about the equivalence being preserved has been proved because the scale factors are the same. Here's another one. Pause me again. Have a go at that. How did you get on? Have you used the stem sentences? So the numerator has been scaled up by eight. Well done. The numerators have been scaled up by eight. What about the numerator and the denominator horizontally? Were they scaled up or down? They were scaled down, weren't they? So they were scaled down by a factor of five. Fantastic. So we had to divide by five, didn't we? And we spoke about that inverse relationship yesterday. So this is your independent task now. So we're drawing on everything that we looked at yesterday and we're thinking about those multiplicative relationships and how we can prove if fractions are equivalent or not, not only by pictorially representing them, but by looking mathematically at those multiplicative relationships. So I've got four examples here for you. I want you to use the stem sentences and explain what is happening each time. So you can do this on your own. We'll go through them at the next session, but really have a think about, draw the arrows on, think about those relationships to say whether they are equivalent or not. Your second task, we've got some problems for you to solve. I'm gonna let you read through those on your own. So you've got a problem there, looking at equivalent fractions. And then if you're ready for a challenge, have a look at that one and say if you agree or disagree with those statements. And that's the end of today's session. Um, so good luck with your independent work and I look forward to seeing you again.